Imagine you're listening to an FM radio station using an FM radio. The radio signal is simply in the air, and if the signal is strong enough, you can listen. In fact, not only can you listen, but theoretically, an infinite amount of other people could also tune into that same station and listen if they are in range. There's no pairing going on or individual connections like there is with the internet. Each receiver is passive, and all of the receivers are receiving the same signal at the same time. This concept is called broadcast, specifically wireless broadcast. Auracast is a wireless broadcast technology made by Bluetooth that fundamentally behaves the same way as a personal low-powered FM transmitter, except the signal is digitally modulated, uses the 2.4 GHz UHF band instead of the VHF band, and adds more features expected from a modern technology. Before with Bluetooth, if you had three friends that all wanted to listen to what you're listening to with their own headphones, you'd be out of luck. You were limited to connecting up to two different audio receiving devices. Worst of all, since both connections are individual, you are sending the audio two separate individual times, which means you've doubled the amount of bandwidth you're using, which adds unnecessary congestion to the 2.4 gigahertz band. With AuraCast, all of this changes. You could have a hundred friends, for example, all listen to your AuraCast with their own headphones, and there would be no need to pair each device, the latency would be the exact same, and you would still only be sending out one single Bluetooth transmission. The only problem with Auracast is that it's a new technology and only a handful of devices support it. Okay, this is the HomeSpot JM320 headphones. These are not your everyday headphones because they have functionality that is very unique. And the functionality is that these are AuraCast capable headphones. These headphones are able to connect to AuraCast. What's so cool about this is that it's not only just the pair of headphones, it's a corresponding app that you can have on your smartphone as well. So for instance, on my iPhone, I have the QK Audio app, and in that app, you can connect to these headphones via a standard Bluetooth connection. Essentially what's happening is these headphones are finding all of the available AuraCast. It's kind of like if you had an FM tuner and you were just going through the dial to see what stations are available, that's what these are doing. And it's constantly scanning the environment to see if there's new aura cast that it can join and once there's an aura cast at least one that's available in the app you can tap on it and almost instantly it'll start playing what's really cool about aura cast and the fact that i said you know literally instantly it'll just start playing is bluetooth designed a brand new codec just for this standard and the audio codec is called lc3 now what's incredible about it is that there is extremely little latency with this codec so lc3 can operate at 10 milliseconds all the way down to seven and a half milliseconds and then there's lc3 plus which can get the latency down even more than that and that is extremely little latency. Other than that, while you're listening to an AuraCast, what you can do is you can be listening to an AuraCast, but at the same time, you can listen to music on your phone. So if you wanted to escape from the AuraCast and just start listening to music on your phone, you could easily start doing that. The way that this could be implemented is say, you know, imagine you're at an airport and the particular airport that you're at has AuraCast functionality. The AuraCast transmission would be going on that explains maybe a gate change or a flight cancellation or anything that they would say over the, the AuraCast broadcast. And you would be listening to music and then all of a sudden these headphones are like, oh, there's a message going. So it will dim the audio that you're currently listening to and it'll start inserting the airport message if you have that turned on, if you want to have something like that. So that is a really cool functionality in the future. And the great thing about these headphones is that these headphones are completely AuraCast capable. So it doesn't just have to work with their own transmitter, which is this. This is the HomeSpot BA210. And this is what is currently broadcasting an AuraCast transmission in my apartment right now. The current model that they have only supports encrypted audio. So there's two modes with AuraCast. You can do an encrypted broadcast, which means in order to 
connect to the broadcast. You need to type in a password. And there's the other type of uh, AuraCast, which is completely open that anybody can just see on their phone and just tap and just start listening to. And that's mainly suited for businesses. And like I gave the airport example and stuff like that. And then also you yourself could have a open broadcast. But I asked uh, HomeSpot about this and they said that their version two of the BA210 is going to be encrypted and non-encrypted. I bought this with my own money and uh, it's been working well. That was my really only downside is that it only allowed for uh, encrypted broadcasts. Now, the good thing is you don't need a clunky broadcaster and you don't need a clunky pair of headphones in order to use Auracast. Auracast is already available on many Samsung devices. Some of the latest Samsung earbuds have them. The latest, I believe, Samsung Galaxy S24 has Auracast capability. So it basically takes the place of one of these broadcaster units to where your phone is now the broadcaster. And this broadcaster from HomeSpot, this will work with any Auracast compatible device. So it's not like HomeSpot headphones have to work with this uh, HomeSpot broadcaster. That's not the case at all. You can have a HomeSpot broadcaster as the broadcaster and you could have uh, Samsung earbuds as the receiver. You could have these as the receiver and a Samsung phone as the, or whatever other phone supports Auracast as the, you know, broadcaster. It doesn't really matter. Same with the encryption. Encryption is just part of the standard, so it works. Let's get into the audio quality. There's a couple things that I would like to bring up. First off, the audio codec used with Bluetooth Auracast is LC3, like I've said before, but the audio quality is not amazing. Now, I would consider myself to be an audiophile. Obviously, these headphones are not audiophile quality. I thought for the price, they were actually pretty decent, and I'll get into the sound quality of these headphones in a second. But Really, the LC3 codec, just going back to the, you know, to the transport level for a second, the LC3 audio codec is more about latency. That's what's super impressive about this codec is the latency. In terms of audio quality, AAC V2 has much better audio quality per bit than LC3 does. So LC3 is not going to win any awards for audio quality. It sounds okay. It's very decent audio but really it is built from the ground up to be extremely low latency and that's where it just becomes incredible. I mean, tapping into it and you're just instantly thrown into the audio experience. Another cool thing about LC3 audio in the future is that it is an extremely flexible codec that supports unlimited audio channels. So you're not just limited to stereo audio with an AuraCast, you could literally have 7.1.4 audio. One of the current implementations for like a personal FM transmitter is with drive-in movie theaters. And I, as a you know kid growing up in Western New York, I went to many drive-in movie theaters, uh, especially on Transit Road in Lockport, if you know the area. This would be really good for the future to have as a replacement for FM. And you could transport high quality audio with many audio channels into a single Bluetooth AuraCast transmission that all of the car's receivers could have in them. Devices are going to slowly come with them built in. It's just another Bluetooth standard. Now, one of the things that I've noticed when using these headphones is that, and this could be a problem with the broadcaster, but I've noticed when watching shows on my TV, that it jumps in and out sometimes between stereo and mono. So I don't know if this is something that could be fixed. It may be a compatibility issue. So this broadcaster on it has a single audio input and then it has a USB-C for power. That audio input can be either three and a half millimeter analog audio input. And it's also a shared input with optical audio in which an optical waveform is transmitting binary information. I didn't really have that big of an issue with the analog input. You know, I, I brought up some 5.1 recordings from uh, over the air TV and it would not play the 5.1. So I had to go through and either transcode it to stereo or just play the stereo audio track and it would work. So I had some issues like that, mainly compatibility. But other than that, I didn't have any dropped connections. Uh, the connection was very good. Um, another thing too, 
um, is the battery life of these headphones have been really, really good. Um, I've had these literally for almost a month now, and the battery is still at 60%. I've used these, I mean, not every day, but quite a bit. And I never charged these when I got them. They were at like 95% battery when I got these. And they're still really, really good uh, for batteries. So these should last you a long time. Also, they're uh, fairly comfortable. Um, I saw some reviews online of people complaining that they were a little warm. I don't think they're, they're too uncomfortable or too warm. Um, the hat that I'm wearing actually makes them not press up against my skull as much. So the hat kind of separates them. Um, I wouldn't say that it gets too uncomfortable. I mean, it's like many other pairs of headphones that I have, but they are decently comfortable. Ultimately, it really just depends on the shape of your head. Some heads will, you know, take these well. Other heads may not. In terms of the audio quality for the headphones themselves, they're nothing amazing. Uh, they have very strong bass, which is not necessarily my favorite audio experience. I like more of an audiophile balanced experience with headphones. These headphones have a very weak treble, so it gets to the point where if you turn up the volume all the way, that bass is going to be like 10 out of 10, honestly 11 out of 10 pounding bass, where it's like, oh my gosh. And then the treble is like maybe like 6 out of 10 or 5 out of 10. So I've noticed that if you're watching a movie with these, you have the you know, broadcaster plugged into your TV via optical out. And you've got a bunch, like a couple people using AuraCast headphones to listen to the movie. These headphones in particular, I could see a point where a major bass drop could be a little bit uncomfortable to listen to if you have the volume turned up. I thought dialogue was very good with these, surprisingly. Uh, mainly just with treble and music, it had a hard time. Now, HomeSpot is also coming out with a receiver box so that you can plug in a receiver into a generic pair of headphones that doesn't have, you know, Bluetooth RCAS capabilities or into a speaker that doesn't have Bluetooth RCAS capabilities. And that is going to be the BA310. And they told me that that'll be coming out soon. I appreciate them contacting me with all my questions. Uh, about everything they have been really good with that again i bought this with my own money but other than that that's really where we're at right now we've got a bluetooth technology that provides a one-to-many model and there is a lot of development around auracast in regards to hearing aids which is really cool the possibilities are endless you can have unlimited headphones connect to one of these little things and uh you know there's obviously other ways of doing it with smartphones and now there's earbuds and the rest. If you want to buy the bundle that comes with the headphones and the broadcaster, I will link an Amazon affiliate link in the description below. When I bought it, it was $89 and I think it went on sale for like $75 one day. So, you know, the, the price can vary, but thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.